Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischl. This is going to be episode 171 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play a session at One Eye Jacks at Sarasota, Florida. I have a ton of hands to go over. Some of them are very, very interesting, and we're going to get right into it. First hand of note. We arrive at the 1-3 table, $500 max here, in a non-optimal angle for filming, but we'll just make it work the best we can. In this hand, I'm in middle position with King Jack off suit. I raised to $15 from middle position. Only the button decides to call, so we end up going heads up to a flop of 976 with two diamonds. Backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. Could throw out a C bet here, but I think this connects with my opponent a little bit more than me. Fine to just check, somewhat give up on this hand, honestly. When I check, my opponent checks it back. Turn is the king of hearts. That's good, binking top pair, decent kicker. Now we can go for some pretty easy and pure value. Half pot size bet seems appropriate, and for $15, my opponent makes the call. On the river is the three of clubs, as safe as it could possibly get. Going for value here, we're definitely going to go small with it, not thinking I can get value from too much better. I mean, king 10, maybe. Sometimes some pocket fives, pocket fours, ace highs will pay off. So I bet $25, very small. My opponent pretty much snap folds. And we take down the first pot. Following that, I button trail to $5. And when four players limp to me, I raise it up to $25 with pocket tens of the black variety. I do think a more optimal sizing is closer to 40, but in the moment I chose 25. Guess I was looking for some action at a relatively tight table. And I do get it because only one player decides to make the call. On the flop of King Four Deuce with two hearts, one overcard's not enough to scare me from doing a C bet. I have all the best kings in range, pretty standard. I continue for $25, and that gets my opponent to fold very quickly. So we take down a decent pot. I win another small one before the button straddles. There's one limp. I'm in the hijack with 8 9 offsuit. I choose to limp, think that I can play this multi weight in relative position and not face too many difficult decisions later. Cutoff calls button checks, so four players, $5 a piece to a flop of ace, five, six with two diamonds. Checks to me, having a gut shot seems decent, but it's a pretty tight table, this one three. Any of these players could have literally limped with an ace X and they're never folding, so not too interested in throwing a bluff attempt out just yet. When I check, it checks through and we bink the seven of hearts on the turn. Well, since it checked through, I don't really expect anyone to have an ace. Don't really know how much value I can go for, but I'm definitely going to try. I bet $10, about half pot, with the literal nuts. The cutoff calls very quickly. Happy to see that. The river is the 10 of hearts. Doesn't actually change my hand strength. I still have the nuts, and I think we have to go polar with this. Don't think my opponent has an ace. So the times he has missed diamonds or missed hearts, he's never calling anything. But sometimes he'll have like 10-7. Pocket eights, six, seven, really just level himself into calling a nearly pot size bet. So I bet $45. It doesn't take too long for my opponent to call. Happy to see that. I show the nuts and we scoop at another pot, this one three table. We win another small one. Many like this, not very notable, but constantly winning small pots before the next interesting hand. I button straddle and when six players limp to me, I raise to $40 with ace queen off suit. Honestly, a better sizing is probably 55 to 60. Need to go a little bit bigger than this, but 40 was my number at the day. To this bet, it goes fold, 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 fold. One middle position player decides to call, so we end up going heads up to a flop of ace, nine, deuce, two diamonds. Well, if I'm going to bet when I have middling pocket pairs on single overcard boards, we're also going to bet when we have top pair decent kicker. Could get value from worse aces, some diamond draws, 9x. Maybe my opponent has like 7s, 8s, 10s, middling pocket pairs that don't want to give up. I bet $40. This appears to be too much. My opponent does not take too long before letting it go, and we take down another one. And another small one. Another one. And another small one before. With one limp, I raised to $15 with jack 9 offsuit from the cutoff. Relatively late position. Could just take it down pre. Seems decent. But in this case, the big blind and the limper decide to call. So we end up going three ways to a flop of eight, eight, five, two clubs. Do have a single club in my hand. So backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. No one should really connect too much with this board. And if my opponents have complete misses, they'll probably just fold to a bet. So when it checks to me, I'm going to go a little over half pot. I bet $25 this time. And to my surprise, both players call. So probably going to have to shut down if I don't improve on the turn card. Which I do not. Turn is deuce of spades. Pretty bad card. Don't think I can credibly bluff anymore in this one. So when it checks to me, I check it back. But the river ace of spades, 
I think opens the door for me pretty clearly. Even more so when both players checked me on the river. I expect any of these players to bet river if they had an 8 as the hand plays. When turn checks through, you have to go for value on the river if you have 3 of a kind. Can't really be afraid of backdoor spades. Additionally, having a spade in my hand seems pretty good. If I have jack 9 of offsuit, I definitely have jack 9 of spades. Possibly play the same way. If I had an ace X hand, play the same way. So theoretically, I'm trying to get hands like pocket sevens, five six, five four, all that stuff, and all the random overs to just fold. So I go for a more value bet oriented size of forty five dollars. He's doing it. Look at the little fella. He's doing it. There he goes. Going into two people seems kind of risky, but when the first player folds, that seems pretty good. Second player calls pretty quickly. Oh, I just announced you're good. Show my hand because I'm, you know, not trying to slow roll him or try to get him to muck. But I definitely want to see this one. Want to know what I'm called down with. And I'm called down with 7-8 off suit. So yeah, that one's never folding. But I think it definitely needs to go for value itself on the river. But what do I know? He probably got max F from a hand that will never pay off a bet but may bluff themselves. Well, that hand brings us pretty much back to even on the day. So with two limps, when I'm in the small blind with five, six of spades, I'm going to raise it up to $20. Happy to just take this one down. Not, no need to see a flop, but I think it widens my range, gives me more connectivity on different boards. Well, both players decide to call, so we're going three ways to a flop of queen, seven, four, rainbow with a spade. Pretty much as pure of a bluff candidate as I could ever hope for, open-ended backdoor spades. I feel great about this one. I throw out $30 trying to build the pot in case my hand hits, or it could put a lot of pressure on these opponents on many different turn cards. But in this hand, $30 is enough when they both fold pretty quickly, and we win a hand with five high. Seems decent. We are finally called for the 2-5 table, and we're gifted with an angle even worse than the last one, but we'll make it work as usual. With a $10 button straddle, there's one limp. I raise to 50 in middle position with pocket 10s. The button decides to defend and the limper decides to call as well. So we end up going three ways to a flop of deuce, deuce, three rainbow. I'm definitely going to size up here. Overpair should be good here, but my hand is definitely vulnerable. We want to protect against like queen, jack, king, queen, all those random two over cards that may peel one. So I size up to $85 and this gets my opponents to fold. So we end up taking on our first hand at 2-5. Good confidence booster. Nice to have an overpair with 10s. Doesn't happen all too often. Before we arrive at the next hand of note. With one limp, I'm in the cutoff with 7-8 of diamonds. I raised to $25. The big blind and the limper decide to call, so we end up going three ways to a flop of 9-9-4 two diamonds. Flush draw seems great. However, I'm not sure how much connectivity I have on this board all too often. And because I bet the last hand, I don't really want to have a 100% post-flop aggression factor seems kind of face up at that point that i don't always have it so when it checks to me i think i'm gonna just try to realize my equity hit my flush seems like a reasonable outcome especially if i get check raised i get put in a very difficult position not really sure what to do at that point so i check this one back when the turn is the six of spades that's above average i turn open-ended as well maybe it connected to the big blind as he leads out for 75 dollars when he does this i actually put him on a six a lot of the time i think a six would play this way, go for max protection. So I'm actually thinking that my seven and eight pairs are definitely live in this spot, as well as my straight possibilities, flush possibilities. I make the call. The river is miserable. Six of clubs. Well, if I put my opponent on a six, he just filled up. And he's going to try to say that he did as he bets $225. Well, having eight high and pretty much the worst hand I could possibly have here, Seems bad. I want my opponent to have a bluff candidate just like the one I have, so he's kind of weighted towards value, I'd say. Either way, this one's going to just be a fold. Not too much to talk about. But it's funny, when my fold, my opponent shows deuce three of clubs for nothing. Actually had the best hand, which is kind of funny. If you're going to show a bluff, you're likely to make the vlog. Next hand of note. I have ace, king of spades in middle position, and with an early position player raised to $15, there's one call. I'm going to three bet this one. I make it $75. Only the big blind decides to call and the early position opener and caller decide to fold. So we end up going heads up to a flop of queen five six with one spade. Not my favorite board. Would have loved to be king or ace high, but I think my opponent misses this just as much as me. I chose a passive line on the last one, got punished for it. So we're going to be aggressive this time. I continue for a half pot size bet, $75. 
my opponent makes the call really not happy to see this one and the turn is the deuce of hearts also on the worst end of the spectrum on turn cards no backdoor spade no straight card completing really bad but I think my opponent has plenty of middling pocket pairs, maybe a 6x, pocket 7s, pocket 8s. Plenty of hands that I'll call one bet and fold to a second one. Especially because he cold called from the big blind. Like, how strong can his hand even be? Versus I'm a 3 better from relatively early position versus a lot of action. He'd easily have aces, kings, pocket queens for the almost nuts. So we're going to try to rep one of these strong hands on this one. I bet $200. And my opponent, I guess, believes me on this one. He lets his hand go, and we take down another one with ace high. Next hand of note. I look down at ace queen off suit, both black, from the big blind, and with two limps, the button race to 30. I don't really like playing three bet pots out of position with these types of holdings. I think I'd rather do a little bit of pot control, so I choose to just call this one. The two other limpers decide to call as well, so we end up going three ways to a flop of 10, 8, 3 with two diamonds. On this one, a middle position opponent just leads out for $25. This is usually indicative of someone on a draw trying to name their own price. And based on that knowledge alone, ace high is definitely good. I could raise here and just try to steal the pot right now, but I still have to play the rest of the hand out of position, so that kind of handcuffs me. When the button decides to fold, I do think I'm ahead of this later position player's range, so I decide to make the call. The turn is somewhat of a brick. It's the eight of hearts. And... As we're heads up, I check it to my opponent, and he bets $25 again. I do think if my opponent had Jack-9 off suit, any two diamonds, 9-7, all of that, he may do this exact line. His draw did get worse, so I don't expect him to try to amp up the aggression, but definitely naming his own price seems to make sense here. So I choose to make the call a second time. On the River 5 of clubs... I checked to my opponent and he bets $180. In this spot, I think there's just a mountain of bluffs that my opponent could have that would have to do this exact line to try to win. Jack 9 whiffed, 9 7 whiffed, all diamonds whiffed. I do block Queen Jack specifically, which is not great. I guess Ace King would be a better candidate to call down here with, but either way, sometimes you have to put your cape on, be a hero, and say this opponent has way too many bluffs. Not a whole lot of credible value hands that play this way, so I stick in the call. Because that's what heroes do. And immediately gets shown ace eight. Well, that's not how that one was supposed to end. That's what. But sometimes when you hero call, you look like a genius. Other times you look like an absolute fool. Finally got a decent seat at the table for the vlogging aspect of poker. Before I looked down at ace king of clubs, and with one limp, the hijack player from the last hand raised to twenty dollars. I make it 80 because I have ace-king suited, and this time I'm in position, so it seems like a reasonable 3-bet. The player who made it 20 is the only caller, so we end up going heads up to a flop of jack, 6, 4, rainbow, 1 club. When my opponent checks to me, I decide to check this one back. Plenty of backdoor potential, straight draw, flush draw, over cards, hate to get blown off my equity, wood check, ace-jack, pocket jacks, and all over pairs, at least at some frequency on this board, so I'm not even capped by checking here. When I check it back, the turn is the eight of clubs. Beautiful sight, pick back door, nut flush draw, feels good. My opponent bets $75. I do think this board connects pretty heavily with his $20 calling a three bet range. So we're going to just call this one, try to connect, try to realize some equity, make the nuts. When I call, the river is the 10 of diamonds. So we are left with a very miserable ace high and my opponent bets $175. As even though we're in a different seat, this is the same opponent from the last hand. Last time he bet Big River, he had it, and I paid him off with ace high. Not going to do on this one. I also think the situation is quite different on this one. I let it go. Somewhat disappointed. Could not make a flush. And my opponent does not show, so we'll never know. Next hand of note. And this is definitely the hand of the vlog. With a button straddle, there's one limp. I'm in middle position with queen 10 of hearts. I raise to $40. The hijack, cutoff, button, and limper call. So we end up going five ways to a flop. This pot is definitely going to get pretty big. And the flop is 9-6 deuce with two hearts. When it checks to me, two overs, flush draw. My opponent should miss a decent amount of the time. I have a lot working for me on this one, so I continue for $110. Little over half pot, and I would love to just take this down now, not need to realize some equity, because 
I've not been realizing it. Feel good after one fold, two folds. Oh, the button decides to call. That's disappointing. Would love to at least play in position the rest of the hand. But the blind decided to fold as well. So we end up going heads up to a turn card, which is the five of spades. Doesn't help me. Doesn't even give me a backdoor straight draw. But we're not going to give up on this one. This one's going to be the time we choose an aggressive line, an aggressive route. Think it's going to be difficult for a random nine to hold on, random six. Pocket sevens, pocket eights may be a little too sticky after they pick up a gut shot as well. So not expecting them to fold all too often. But if my opponent was peeling with like 10 jack, king queen, just overs and position, maybe he'll fold to a $250 bet. My opponent thinks for quite a long time when I put this out there, he actually asked me if I'm recording. Is this camera on? Yeah, we're live. Oh, oh no, nah, I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> I ain't seen nothing. Matter of fact, I'm blind in my left eye and 43% blind in my right eye. I don't see much of nothing. A matter of fact, I can't even see you, sir. Think he's kind of interested in making the vlog. Disappointed to see that as that somewhat indicates that he's gonna call super light and just try to make the vlog, which is not the outcome we're looking for when we have queen high. Eventually my opponent settles on a call. This pot's getting massive. Can I see a heart dealer to make my entire session one time? No, king of clubs. Now a decision point, is this a card to bluff at? I have thrown two barrels with ace king high before. I could have king queen of hearts, ace king of hearts, obviously, pocket kings. There are plenty of kings in my range here that I think rivered a very strong top pair and might consider putting out a bet here. But I actually think in general, if I had ace king, I'd probably go for just showdown value here. Additionally, this opponent with his questions, I really thought was just in a hero calling down mood. So based on speech play, was not really expecting to get my opponent off a pair on this one, as I assume they just really wanted to make the vlog. So I check it, giving up, waving the white flag. Way through. Extremely disappointed, wish I could have made a flush just one single time in this session. When my opponent checks it back, I just say, you're good. He responds with a, no, you're good. And I say, no, it's just queen high. And he nods and says that I'm good. Why are you pulling me? I'm right. Queen high is somehow good here. My only guess is like seven, four of hearts, as he said he had straight draw, flush draw. Very, very few combinations of cards where queen high is good on this board, but it's really fun to win the biggest pot of the night by far with just queen high. Now the stack's looking amazing. We're into the game for 1500 Had to top off a little bit, but definitely profitable at this point. Before I win another smaller, less notable hand before we arrive at the final hand of note. I have pocket 10s again. Seems to be a decent hand for me today. When I'm in the cutoff, I make it $20. Small blind 3 bets to 95 Definitely a larger size 3 bet than most people employ. Almost 5x. But with 10s and position, we're definitely going to make the call here. And the flop is very good for us. Jack 7-7 seven, seven, rainbow. And my opponent checks to me. When my opponent 3 bets that large and then checks flop, I assume he has a hand like ace, king, ace, queen. Pretty much always I'm just pegging him for one of those hands. So I'm going to go for some value and protection. I don't really expect my opponent to fold to one bet here if he has one of those holdings. But $125 is definitely a price I'm happy to see get called and I can really bomb a lot of brick turn cards. But my opponent does not call. He just check jams for like $800. Well, that's very unstandard but i guess for that specific action i can pretty much just fold and not even be worried about what he had i don't really expect him to just check jam as a bluff so he probably has a better hand i fold and he shows pocket jacks so top full house goes for a check jam it's actually i'm not even mad that's amazing <laughs> i guess we'll take it we lost not that much when we were bluffing into a full house. So we are into the game for $1,500, out of the game for $2,120, which across eight hours equates to $77 an hour or 15 big blinds an hour. So yeah, quite happy with the results. Goes the other way if when I have the queen high flush, my opponent decides to turn his hand into a bluff, but it's nice when the biggest hand of the night with queen high goes your way. Additionally, today, some of my ace high call downs didn't go well. Some of my bluffs attempts got called. But I do think, in general, it's better to have these in your repertoire. You want to put your opponent in tough spots and not have it go the other way around. You want your opponent to think, maybe I can't bluff this guy. He'll call me with ace high. You want them to think, maybe he's bluffing because he's done it several times and make them call you down light. So your goal of playing poker should be that it's difficult to play against you. And I do think I accomplished that today. 
and we booked a decent sized win as well. If you have made it all the way to this point, thank you, I appreciate it. Please consider subscribing, helps me out a great deal, and I will see you on the next one.